On this episode of the Contagious Influencers of America podcast, when two worlds collide. You know, I had the church just not really understanding why I would go on a show like The Bachelor. I had the world not really understand why a person of faith would go on the show like The Bachelor. And so I felt, you know, kind of in a weird in between and the tension in the middle. So why in the world did you go through that? Oh my gosh. That's the one and only Madison Pruitt from The Bachelor fame. And she is our very special guest today on CIA. I'm David Sams. I'm your host. And my co-host today is my very own daughter, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's right. I asked her to come and be a part of this interview because she just loves The Bachelor. And she watches every episode. And she's very familiar with uh, with Madison, so uh, or she calls her Maddie. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. And uh, I can't wait to, to share this episode with you because, uh, you know, Madison really had it tough on uh, ABC's The Bachelor. She appeared on season 24, which starred Peter Weber, and uh, she was a finalist but quit the show during the finale because she felt that, well, she felt that she and Peter, they just weren't on the same page, you know, about marriage, faith, lifestyle, etc. Now, they did, in fact, end up getting back together, at least temporarily, and uh, that was announced on the uh, After the Final Rose but days later, it all came to an end, and she's going to get into that, and uh, it gets kind of fun, kind of juicy, so you're going to want to listen to this. Now she is, in fact, sharing her side of the story and how she feels she was able to stand firm by her beliefs under a lot of pressure while on the show and afterwards in her new book, Made for This Moment, which is available right now wherever books are sold. You're going to be really, really inspired by this interview. And I can't wait to bring in my daughter and uh, and have her help me out with this one because uh, she brings a whole other uh, side to this thing. So uh, Elizabeth Sams will be joining me in just a second. But first, uh, do you notice prices for food, fuel, and homes are on the rise in our country right now? I'm sure you do. I sure do. But amazingly, mortgage rates, they're, they're still incredibly low. Now, how long will it last? Well, that's the million-dollar question, of course. So uh, I, I've just got to bring this up to you right now and just throw this out there. If a cash out refinance or home purchase is in your plans, I got to tell you, the clock is ticking. So why not give our friends at Fellowship Home Loans a call at 800-804-SAVE. That's 800-804-SAVE, 800-804-7283, and put interest rates in a time out. You can also find them at fellowshiphomeloans.com. Now, you can save on your monthly payment, take cash out to reduce debt, or maybe even shorten your term. The Fellowship Home Loans team will take the time to listen to you and help you live the dream for less. So give them a call today at 800-804-SAVE. That's 800-804-7283. Fellowshiphomeloans.com, available online right now. Intercontinental Capital Group, DBA Fellowship Home Loans, Equal Opportunity Lender, NMLS number 60134. I always love reading that. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful. Let's get to my interview that I recently did along with my daughter Elizabeth Sams with Madison Pruitt. Hey Madison, how you doing? Hi, I'm so good. How are you? Fantastic. I'm doing good. I also have with me uh, Elizabeth Sams, my daughter. She's a fan of yours. Oh my goodness. What's up, Elizabeth? <laughs> Hi, How are Madison. you doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> I, I wanted her on here too because I know you, you graduated uh, from Auburn with a, a degree mm-hmm. in uh, what? Communications. I did. I did. And she graduated from Belmont with a degree in communication. She's now going to USC and getting a, what are you getting? Master's in communication management. There you go. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Good. That's awesome. Where, where, where are we calling you? Where, where are you at today? 
I am in Dallas, Texas right now. Oh, okay. So let's get the obvious out of the way so, so we can move on to more important things. What's your current relationship status? <laughs> My current really, I am single. So if you know of any good candidates, you just send them over my way. You don't want advice from him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you a copy of our upcoming book that we have with Jackie Dorman. She's also from uh, Texas. She's coming out with a book that uh, that we're putting out called uh, Married in 12 Months or Less. How's that? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I mean, hey, I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> oh, well, let's talk about your book because it really caught my eye and I think it's very timely. And uh, I, want, I want to go into the hood made for this moment, uh, which has uh, just come out um, and it's uh, standing firm with strength, grace and courage. What was the uh, inspiration for this book? You know, I just, I think I've seen throughout my life and, and mainly when I came off of The Bachelor and everyone kept asking me, you know, how were you able to stand firm under pressure and stay true to yourself? And how are you able to be so sure of what you believe and not compromise and give in to the, the voices around you, the opinions around you? And so I, I wanted to, you know, write something and put something out there that really spoke to those questions and showing, hey, I've had moments of folding under pressure and moments when I didn't have, you know, what it took to stand firm and strength, grace and courage. But I also have had those moments where I felt like God gave me what I needed to, you know, stay true to myself. And so I wanted to speak to the moments when I folded under pressure and the lessons I learned from that. And then the moments when I felt like I was able to really step into all that God had for me. And I know that we live, you know, in a world where so many long to know their worth and their purpose, and they seek that courage to stand up for what they believe in. But, you know, maybe they feel like, who am I to speak out or who am I to stand firm? Like, no one cares what I have to say. Um, or maybe, you know, they, they just feel like this is all life will ever be. You know, there's nothing more for life than this right here. And, and they're just kind of stuck in this state of depression or hopelessness. And so I, I pray that through reading my book, you know, everyone sees that they were made on purpose and for a purpose. They learn to love themselves. They learn how to fight for their identity. They learn how to stand firm with that strength, grace, and courage in their faith. And, you know, just hoping that made for this moment will help everyone navigate the realities of living in an age of social media when there are so many confusing standards and mixed messages. And I want to see my generation, you know, live out their faith and purpose with courage and conviction, knowing that God's timing is not a mistake and that they were made for this moment. That's amazing, Maddie. So obviously in every moment we have challenges. So not including your experience on The Bachelor, but what is the biggest challenge you've gone through after the show and how are you overcoming it? I'd say the biggest challenge since the show has just been kind of adapting to this kind of new season of life. And when a lot of people have eyes on you and a lot of people have opinions about who you are and what you should do and how you should live and just put labels on you. And so, you know, when I came off the show, that was probably one of the most difficult things is just having so many people just say honestly hateful and cruel things. Um, you know, I had the church just not really understanding why I would go on a show like The Bachelor. I had the world not really understand why a person of faith would go on the show like The Bachelor. And so I felt, you know, kind of in a weird in between and the tension in the middle. And I just remember having so many moments where I felt like God would just speak to me like, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to explain yourself. You just be who I've called you to be and I'll take care of the rest and just trust me with this. And so um, that, that's kind of what I, I had to lean on throughout this time when I had so many people, uh, you, you know, just having opinions and voices and trying to label me or trying to, um, I don't know, just different rumors that would be spread and, and all kinds of different things like that. And, um, having more eyes on me, I feel like was definitely a big adjustment, but, um, for me, I never felt like I had to change myself. I never felt like I had to be anyone else. I just felt like I needed to stay true to, you know, what I believed and who God had called me to be. And so even in, you know, being in the spotlight when millions of people were watching me on a reality TV show, I felt like I just 
I was just Maddie, you know, I, I wasn't anyone other than that. And so for me, it wasn't like this huge switch in that sense of, oh, now I have this whole different, you know, life, or I now have to be this totally different person. It was like, no, this is a different season, but you know, this is who I am. And I want, I want people to see Jesus in me and I want them to be attracted to that and drawn to that. And so, but I, I would say that just the opinions and the hurtful comments, um, the words, all of that was probably one of the biggest adjustments and, and just knowing, okay, God, if you've called me to this, you'll sustain me through it. You'll defend me through it. You'll give me the strength that I need for it and kind of clinging to that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry you had to go through that. I know that even in the spotlight, it's harder than people not in the spotlight, but for women who aren't in the spotlight, kind of going through, you know, an identity shift or just you know, a difficult time, what do you have to say to women who feel like this time isn't theirs? Like, especially with dating, you know, changes of career, um, the major aspects of life, like what is a takeaway that you can give to them? Yeah. So I love that question because that was one of my biggest, you know, I, I guess my heart in writing this book, I didn't want it to seem like it was like, Oh, you know, like read about my life, read about my story, but rather, Hey, I want to meet you exactly where you're at, but I want to help you ultimately get to where you dream and long to be. And even though all of our circumstances are different and, you know, some, some people saw me on a reality TV show for two months of their life, but I have so much more than that, right? Like I've faced a lot other pressure and temptation before I was ever thrown into that situation of my life. And so even though our outside circumstances may not look the same, our moments of pressures may not look the same, our moments of temptation may not look the same, it still leaves most of the time the same feelings on the inside, the same wrestles, the same struggles, the same thoughts and you know, moments of, do I compromise? Do I you know, just change myself? to be loved and accepted? Do I just, you know, settle for less because then maybe someone will see me as worthy or I'll, you know, be affirmed or I'll be loved in this moment? Do I, you know, just go with the flow and do what everyone else is doing because I don't want to go against the grain and be the awkward one, you know, choosing to not give in and choosing to not participate. So I feel like we all face, you know, those pressures and those tensions every day, even though it may look different on the outside. And so I really wanted to speak to, um, you know, that that person who who is feeling that way. And I honestly, I feel like we all feel that way, you know, and I feel like who we identify ourselves as affects every area of our life. And that's why it is so important for us to know who we are. And a lot uh, a lot of what I talk about in my book kind of goes back to the importance of, you know, who you are when no one is watching is who you will be when everyone is watching. And the strength that everyone saw in my life on display for millions to see was directly connected to the decisions I was making in private when no one was around, when no one was there to watch. And so what I mean by that is that your toughest decisions in life and your most pressuring moments will require a lot of strength grace and courage, but that strength and courage doesn't just pop up out of nowhere in the moment when all eyes are on you. It's developed in the moments when no one's around you. And that's why it's so important to value, you know, that private life and those moments when you are asking yourself, who am I? Who do I want to be? What kind of life do I want to live? What's my purpose here on this earth? What value do I have to add to those around me? Because it's there where growth happens and strength and endurance are built and where you're equipped with what you need for out there to make sure that you're ready for whenever moments of pressure and temptation come. And that's, you know, what I want to encourage people with is I think too many times we just put ourselves in these moments of pressure and we don't really think about it, right? We just go through life and we're like, whatever. And then when moments of pressure come, we just rely on our feelings or on adrenaline or just this hope that, oh, I hope I have, you know, the, the courage to stay true to myself. I hope I have the conviction to, um, to stay true to my beliefs. But most of the time, if we're just relying on, you know, ourselves in the heat of that moment, most of the time we're going to fold under pressure um, and we're not going to have what it takes to stand firm because I, I know myself and I'm like, man, I don't have what it takes to stand firm just going off of adrenaline and feelings. And that's why our feelings are valid, but they're not always right. And that's why we can't just rely on our feelings to uh, lead us in, in, in the best of what God has for us. And so I wanted to encourage people, you know, through my book, uh, of course, first is know who you are and invest in yourself well, because when moments of pressure come, what's inside of you is what's going to come out of you. So what you allow in, who you invite in, what you feed yourself, 
all of that matters. And I was able to stand firm in my convictions on a show like The Bachelor and hold true to what I believed, not because I was strong in the moment of pressure, but because I was strong in the moment of preparation before those moments of pressure ever even came. So spending that quiet time with God every morning, um, building on, you know, that foundation of this is who God says I am and, you know, making those decisions every day in those small moments that no one saw that really continued to point back to that and, and add value to that. And I think a second thing that also really helps that I think a lot of people don't really talk about is, you know, pre-deciding what to do before the pressure and the heat of the moment ever arrives. I think that's something that's really helped me. Um, I've made it a discipline in my life to try not to make big decisions in the heat of the moment. And I think a lot of times we agonize over these non-critical decisions, right? Like deciding what kind of dress to buy or how to style our hair or, you know, all these things. But you know, we don't, we don't think oftentimes long and hard about, you know, the important behavioral decisions, which are crucial to our destiny and our eternity. And a lot of times people just react. And so I want to encourage people, you know, that we can pre-decide before the moments ever arrive, even though we may not know exactly what those moments look like, we can ask ourselves, what do I value most? What, what kind of life do I want to live? What kind of person do I want to be in those moments of pressure? And then from that place, make decisions that align with that. Definitely. And focusing so hard on, you know, God's path for you and your identity will also help you um, with finding people who you want to surround yourself with. And that kind of leads to, you know, I it's so funny because I went to the same high school as your former bachelor man. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> small world. I don't know him. I'm much younger. But considering, you know, the bachelor season didn't go quite as planned, what were your major takeaways from that experience when it comes to choosing a man? Have your standards changed? Um, I love that question. I think that for me, my standards have, they've always been extremely high. And that is a question I get a lot like, okay, so then why did you go on The Bachelor? Or did you really think it would work with Peter? Um, which I think that Peter is an amazing guy. But of course, as everyone knows who watched the show, at the end of the day, you know, we ended our relationship because our values and um, our spiritual life was not on the same page. And so, you know, there wasn't going to be a very bright future there. Um, and so ultimately, you know, I, I made that decision knowing that this just, this isn't what, you know, I feel like God has for me and, and what I have um, that I'm looking for in a godly man and leader of, of my family one day. And so for me, my standards have always been high. I think for that particular season, that's something I don't really totally count just because going on The Bachelor was something I felt like God was leading me to do, um, which didn't totally make sense. And I talk a lot about that in the book and why I ultimately made that decision. Um, but, you know, even before that in my standards, before the show, my standards, uh, you know, ultimately when I chose to walk away from the show and then even now, um, are very, are very high. And I, and I have, so I actually have what I call my three C's and my three P's it sounds pretty intense, which I guess it kind of is, but <laughs> those are like the three things. So the three C's are the three things that I evaluate before I would ever consider dating someone. And then my three P's are the three things that I evaluate when I am dating someone that I, you know, process as I'm dating them before I would ever consider marrying them. So my three C's are convictions, character, and chemistry. And basically just those are three important things to me of just knowing, okay, like this man is a man who actually you know, loves Jesus. This isn't his parents' religion. This isn't, you know, this, these rules and laws that he follows, but it's actually a relationship that he has with Jesus. And it is the foundation of his whole life. And he lives his life from a place of convictions rather than feelings and pressures around him. So that's really important to me, you know, character, obviously I want a man of character, uh, good character, godly character, and then chemistry, you know, I want to be attracted to him, right? Like I, I want there to be attraction there. Um, so that's important. And then the three P's are the three things that I evaluate when we are dating before I would ever, you know, get married to this person. And that is patterns. You know, what is his everyday actions and decisions look like? Do they reflect his convictions and character? You know, is he consistent? Um, is he consistently growing? Is he consistently getting better? Is he consistently surrounding himself with godly people? Um, and two would be purpose. Do our, you know, do our 
a vision for our life? Like, does it align? Not are we doing the same thing with life, but you know, do we at least have an aligned vision of like, this is what I feel like, you know, God has called me to do with my life. And my life is to serve people and to love people and to make a difference and ultimately to go and make disciples. And so if that is our mission, like that's something that I feel like is really important for us to be on the same page with. Um, and then lastly, I would say is just peace. Like, I just got to have a peace about it. I need to know that, you know, when I pray about it and when I think about it, when I imagine my future, like God has just given me a piece about it. So those are my three C's and three P's. So I would say, yes, I have very high standards. Um, now I would say with where I'm at in life, it's even, I feel like more intense and I don't really just like go on dates often. So, you know, I, I really vet people out pretty intensely before I even go on a date. Um, and that's something that I do, you know, encourage all of my single friends with is just do not settle, keep your standards high, keep your roots deep. Um, you know, find someone that is going to partner with you um, in life and, and partner with you in, in keeping your faith uh, strong and calling you higher and leading you well. And, um, you know, and also being able to like expand the kingdom of God with you. And that's something that's, you know, super important to me. So something that I continue to just encourage, you know, all my single friends with. Wow, that's, that's good. Uh, I, I should have heard this about 40 years ago. That would help me a lot. Uh, <laughs> you talk, you, in your book, you talk about uh, claiming your confidence so you can get out of the comparison game. And I, and I know you've got, uh, what, a couple million uh, uh, TikTok followers and something almost a couple million uh, Instagram followers. So um, uh, let, let's talk about that. How, how, do you, how do you stay out of the comparison game? And it's so hard, you know, with the world we're living in today, when everyone, it's so easy to just obviously show the highlight reels and the moments when you feel your best, the moments when you look your best. Um, and, and for a lot of people, if that's all you're seeing and you're spending all of the time on social media, it's going to be really hard for you to be truly content with who you are, with who God has called you to be and with what God has for you, because you're spending all of your time looking at what everyone else has. So, you know, one of my biggest encouragements to people is, you know, to definitely try and as much as you can, like limit your time on social media. And if not limit your time on social media, be careful with the content that you are taking in, um, with what you are allowing in, because it will affect what comes out of you. It will affect how you think, how you live, the choices that you make. Um, and that's why it's so important. And what I encourage people with, you know, from your social media to the music you listen to, to the movies and shows you watch, like all of that matters. And I think a lot of times we overlook that and we're like, oh, it's not a big deal. Uh, but it, but it does, it matters because it's, you know, what you're allowing in has a huge effect on what's going to come out. And so, uh, that's something that I would encourage is just, you know, be careful with the content you are taking in the people that you're following, um, how much time you're spending on it. But, you know, for me, I think, uh, I've had these moments. I think one of the biggest moments where I've struggled with comparison kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends and especially growing up in the South, you know, a lot of my friends are married and have kids. And so for me, for a long time, it was super hard for me to be content in singleness when, you know, I was that always the bridesmaid, never the bride, right? Like I was, I was this, like there for the say yes to the dress moment, take the engagement pictures, plan the bachelorette parties, you know, one wedding after another. And so it was super easy for me to be like, wait, God, you know, what the heck? Like, where's my moment? Where's my Prince Charming? And it would be super easy for me to give into, you know, comparison and just constantly feel discontent with where I was at in my sing like singleness season of life because everyone else was in a totally different season than me. And, you know, I remember this one moment when I was getting ready to go to a rehearsal dinner and I was, you know, struck with this daunting realization that I, I was going to be the only single person at the entire rehearsal dinner. And I was going to be sitting with, you know, all couples and I just called my mom and I was freaking out. And I was like, mom, like I'm gonna be sitting at a table with all the other bridesmaids and their husband. I'm gonna be the only single one there. And she could tell I was really affected by this and really struggling. And she, you know, responds with, uh, with authority. And she was like, Maddie, let me tell you something. She was like, you would rather be sitting at that table single than sitting next to the wrong husband. And she was like, don't compare your season to theirs. You definitely don't want it before you're ready for it. 
And, you know, she continued to explain to me that God was preparing me for something that was coming. And I had to keep my confidence without comparing and, you know, challenge me to use that pain that I was feeling in that moment and turn it into purpose, which is ultimately, you know, what I feel like I've tried to do um, in, in writing and in speaking is using those moments. Cause I still, of course, I, we all have moments of comparison and we all have moments of pain. Um, but for me, it's like, okay, when I have those moments, how do I not let my thoughts run wild um, and feeling like I'm not enough or there's something wrong with me or, you know, just to like focus so much on what other people have and where they're going, but rather how can I use those, you know, moments of feeling pain and use it to pour into someone else and help someone else. Cause I think, you know, it's so hard to see where you're going when you're so busy looking at where everyone else is going. It's so hard to see what you have when you're so busy looking at what they have. And I feel like, and what I try and encourage people with is there's no limit to the difference we can make when we change our perspective from comparison to opportunity um, and, and see it as, you know, God has given me what I have for a reason. And now it's time, instead of choosing to compare myself to someone else, let's choose to live our best life. Let's choose to be the best that we can be. Um, you know, when we compare ourselves to others, that's a lose, lose situation. Like we're always going to lose, whether we, you know, choose to be prideful and say, oh, I have it so much better than them or choose to be insecure and say they have it so much better than me. It's a lose, lose situation. And so having those moments of saying, you know what, I can choose to see what they have, or I can choose to look within myself and see, man, like this is who God's made me to be. So I might as well embrace it. Right. Like I might as well love it because I only get one life. And so for me in those moments, it's been huge to turn to God's word, remind myself of who I am, confront those lies of feeling like I'm not enough and someone else has it better than me and really speak God's truth and promises over my life or even turn, you know, like in that moment, turning to my mom, turning to a trusted friend, a mentor, a family member and letting them remind me of who I am and speak that life over me. You know, I, I know that you have a heart for ministry and outreach. As a matter of fact, you, you uh, work with one of my favorite uh, entities, and that's uh, the L.A. Dream Center. Um, yeah. Oh, man, it's just amazing there what they do. And um, I, I have to tell you, I'm so impressed with the, 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 your uh, – I'm, I'm just so impressed with what, what you're putting out there and the, the way you speak into these things. And uh, I, I've actually never done this before, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I want to make you a regular contributor on our show. You're, oh, you're, let's you're, do you're, it. You're I'm amazing. down. <laughs> you, no, you're, you're absolutely amazing. And, of course, there in uh, Dallas, where you are now, we're on uh, KLTY, uh, which is uh, a powerhouse there in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think you really uh, – I think you'd reach a lot of people. And, uh, um, man, I, I just am so, so impressed with you. And, and your book is so timely. I know there, especially now, I mean, the whole world is uh, going through a big change and uh, so many people are pivoting. So many people are really taking a closer look at how they want to make a living. Uh, you know, a lot of people right. have had a year and a half to, to think about it and do research. And, it, you know, it's no big surprise. There's a lot of jobs out there that need to be filled because people at this point are just saying, hey, you know what? I've had some time to think about my future, and uh, I don't. I don't think that this is God's purpose for me. Right. Right. So Absolutely. they're reevaluating things, and I think I think you yeah. could really help uh, speak into that. Well, thank you. You know, I I would I would be honored, and I am honored and humbled just to, uh, you know, hopefully just share everything that God has spoken to me. I feel like you know we all have gifts, right? We all have things inside of us that this world needs, and. I think when we start tapping into that, like that's, that's what it is to be made for this moment. And it's not one person is, and one person's not every single one of us were made for this moment. And some of us never step into the fullness of what God has for us, because, you know, maybe we think we're not enough or, you know, maybe other people have told us that we're not enough, um, or for whatever reason, but I, I just want everyone to know that they were made for this moment and that God has big plans and purposes for their life. And, you know, and however way I can do that, whether that's through, you know, publicly speaking or writing or just having dinner with someone, you know, that's, that's my heart is for everyone to know that there's a reason they're here on this planet and that they have something valuable to give and that it's a, it's, it's something that's so much bigger than themselves. And that's the beauty of it is, you know, my life is not for me. My life is not my own. My life is, you know, to, to make a difference, to love on other people, to add value to other people and to, um, you know, ultimately glorify God. And so, 
Uh, I just want everyone to get to that place because that's where true, you know, fulfillment, purpose, joy, contentment, and so much more is found. So thank you so much for your, your kind words of encouragement. The book is called Made for This Moment, Standing Firm with Strength, Grace, and Courage, uh, now available. And uh, Madison, thank you so much for spending this time with us. This has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I really, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Maddie. And thank you, Madison, and thank you, Elizabeth, for uh, joining me here in the studio. You know, I really love what Madison had to say about uh, killing comparison with confidence, because that comparison game is very real, and so many of us uh, are guilty of it. So uh, thank you, Madison. Hey, folks, if you uh, really want to do yourselves a big favor, or maybe you have somebody in your family that really needs uh, this uh, inspiration by Madison, please check out her book. It's called Made for This Moment. It is now available wherever books are sold, and it's a great one. It, it really is. And I really appreciate this young woman for for really uh, opening up her uh, her heart. And uh, she's, she's, a, she's an encourager. She is, she is a real encourager. And I really appreciate her for also for standing up for her faith and for making some tough choices uh, on, on national TV. I mean, my goodness. Woo. Wow. Something else. Made for this moment, now available wherever books are sold. This is David Sams, and you've been listening to CIA, Contagious Influencers of America, from the producers of the number one faith-based show in all America, and that's Keep the Faith. Hey, we're on some 300 radio stations now. Can you believe it? And I'm talking about in the U.S., Canada, uh, the U.K., Australia. It's pretty wild. You can check out our radio show at keepthefaith.com. There you'll find all kinds of great episodes that are available for you to listen to right now. And, of course, if you'd like to listen to more of CIA podcast episodes, simply go to to um, uh, contagiousinfluencers.com, and there's a whole slew of them right there featuring uh, people who are ch- out to change the world, change the world and bring you all kinds of great inspiration from all kinds of different angles. So, You can check that out at ContagiousInfluencers.com. And I have to ask you, please do go in and rate and review us because uh, those reviews mean the world to us. That's how people really find out about us, how they gain the confidence to, 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 uh, you know, invest a half hour, an hour to listen to an episode. And it's by your kind words and by your five-star rating. So so please do that. And uh, finally, I just got to ask you to go out there and consider living that life and living color because... It sure is a heck of a lot more interesting than living it in black and white. I'm David Sam. See you next time here on CIA, Contagious Influencers of America.